there is no reason why I should be making a video about this particular game in this fucking year. The game in question today is Sonic Colors Ultimate. Sonic Colors on the Wii is one of the best games during the mid-2000s. I grew up playing this game. This game came out when I was 10 years old. I am now 21. And y'all re-released this game for the 30th anniversary like this? Are you out of y'all damn mind? There is life-threatening and data-corrupting glitches in this damn game. And y'all remastered it like this for the sole purpose of letting the younger generation in onto the Sonic franchise. And y'all re and y'all re-released this game like this. Who the fuck was checking these people? Cause obviously y'all didn't, so I'll do it for you. Hi Dios mio, I need to calm down. Um one of the newest introductions to Sonic Colors Ultimate is the Jade Ghost Wiz. It's new to Sonic Colors Ultimate, but it's not new to anybody who's played the Sonic franchise in the past five years. It debuted in Team Sonic Racing as a cheap knockoff to the boo power up in the Mario Kart franchise, allowing you to take somebody's item from them. However, in this game, it's repurposed to be Danny Phantom. You can pass through walls by teleporting to enemies or these little Rick and Morty-esque portals to grab park tokens and red rings. Now, what, what they've done to introduce, or rather include, this Wisp into the game is that they've took previously hollowed out segments of stages and just repurposed them with red rings or coins to have, you know, a use for the Jade Ghost Wisp. Like, some of these shits, some of these placements of, of the Jade Ghost Wisp is literally the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like, coming up, you're gonna see me literally have to teleport through two fucking floors. Just to get to a damn red ring. And there's more. There's more. Just keep watching. Dog, dog, there isn't even a red ring up here. There's just two enemies and a 100 count ring. The 100 count ring in this game grants you an invincibility for the next like seven seconds. But by the time you reach down to this path right here to go towards the next group of enemies, it's already fucking worn off. So what's the point? Not only is there a brand new gold ring, the end of Act 1 is on that path.
Look at this. A brand new path opened up by the Jake Ghost Wiz. It's cool for exploration, but, but there's nothing worthwhile on it outside of the singular park token that you can just get from beating Metal Sonic for the first six times. Like what? We'll get to Metal Sonic in a little bit, but after I show you the most ridiculous, out of the way, red ring place Jade goes with bullshit I've ever seen. Just, 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 just look at this one, bro. Are y'all seeing this? We are literally at the top. The top of Aquarium Park. What the hell? What bro? Uh, who, who would think to look there? Metal Sonic is in this game, which is cool. But my problem is, they didn't do anything with him that involves the Rise of the Wiz series. I thought that they were going to introduce Metal Sonic and the Jay Ghost Wisp in the Sweet Mountain. But no, they're just waiting for you on the world map and Tropical Resort, which is the first world in the entire game. I had the idea of introducing them both in Sweet Mountain, and then having the Wisp that saved the Jay Ghost Wisp from, from that facility in the show, they get taken by Metal Sonic to each, to each one of the worlds, where you then race Metal Sonic and free one of them. And the reward for you freeing them is that you unlock a pair of, of, glo of gloves and a pair of shoes depending on, on the color of the wisp that you just saved. But no, all we get in total from beating Metal Sonic six times is an ugly aura, 300 tokens, and a cool looking boost. Now I'm sure you noticed by the clips that I've been showing you in, in the previous segments that the audio in this game is very buggy. It can either be outright missing, it can get randomly cut out, or it can be so loud that it overshadows the music in this game. Now, that's kind of a double-edged sword, because the remixes in this game are kind of ass. But, the OG music in this game is very good. But, as you can see, there is no way to change that, because the music and sound effects of all you are on the same slider. And there's no option anywhere to only have the original music play. This is kind of ridiculous, especially because we were told that that, that we were going to be able to switch it back to the OG music at any time. But no, we have to suffer for the, the first three acts of every single world for some awful remixes. There are good ones, but the majority ones are bad. Sonic has always been about speed. So, from 2005 onward, they've always added some kind of modification to the game to make Sonic go faster. And usually what is the product of that speed is Motion Blur. Now, Motion Blur in Sonic games is actually fairly toler tolerable. Especially ones back in like from like 2005 to like 2008. But here, in this game, it is a straight up health hazard. I have 20-20 vision. And my eyes get strained from seeing this shit. And there's a reason why. It's because that the area of effect of the motion blur in this game is static and not dynamic. And I found this out by going to Planet Wisp Act 1 and Egg Shuttle. And now one of the properties of Egg Shuttle is that you keep your boost gauge filled depending on how much boost you have in between acts. So and I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. Did you catch that? Probably not. That's the point. That's the whole point of motion blur. But I've slowed it down to literally a quarter of the game's speed. So now look at this. When Sonic takes off, I start boosting, right? Can you make out a oval in the midst of that? You can see like a little bit of an oval and how what's directly in front of Sonic is clear. But everything outside of it is blurred out. 
I'll slow it down even more to 0.5 speed. Here we go. We boost. You can see more clearly now because there's things like contrasting against it. You can see that a little bit underneath Sonic's feet is clear and the end directly in front of him is clear. Then you can make out kind of like an oval around him. Everything outside of that little circle or oval is blurred out, but everything in front of you is clear. Now, when I said that, that this was static and not dynamic, I meant that this doesn't change. It is always like this, unless it's deactivated. It is always going to be like this no matter what. And what this results in is if you boost during some segments at some stages, you literally cannot see Sonic or what's in front of you. How the hell are you gonna play a Sonic game if you can't see what's in front of you? Here are some examples. At some point in Sonic Colors, you will unlock the Hover Wisp, which is a cool wisp that has one of Sonic's most iconic abilities called the Light Speed Dash, where you literally go along a trail of rings at, well, light speed. Now, what happens is that when you do the light speed technique when there's no rings nearby, Sonic will just slightly inflate and send out a shockwave of the most lethal dose of motion blood I've ever seen in a video game in my entire life. Now. The reasoning why we do this is that when you spam that technique when there's no rings around, Sonic actually stays in the hover wisp for a longer amount of time, meaning that we can reach higher heights and activate some cool glitches, especially in Aquarium Park Act 4. But we don't do that anymore, well, because this, look at this. Sega, I know at the beginning of this video, I was mad at you, I was hot head, I, I was so mad bro, but like, I implore you, I beg of thee, Saya, put a goddamn motion blur toggle, button, slider, something in this game bro, why the hell is the only video option in this game, the goddamn brightness, this game is already bright enough as it is, this nigga Sonic reflects light like he's a goddamn mirror, and sometimes he's just non-existent in some parts of Starlight Carnival. That I'll get to later. But please, for the people in my family that have glasses, and especially for the near side of people out there, oh my god, they cannot play this game, bro. They cannot. With the seizures and shit, and the lack of eyesight, like no, mm -mm. This is a recipe for disaster. I, I still can't believe how y'all released this game like this in this current state and during this year. This is just ridiculous, it's unacceptable. I'm getting hungry and tired, let's wrap this shit up. Now, that seizure thing wasn't a joke. 
that was the whole reason why I made this video and in combination of the segment that I just showed you where you could literally put a strain on your eyes is the reason why I was so angry in my intro. Now, it has since been patched as of September 14th, 2021. The, the audio that you're hearing right now is being recorded a, a day after that. And the segments of the, of the glitches and the bugs that you're seeing before and after this mini segment are still in the game. Because the patch that they rolled out yesterday on the 14th only fixed the seizure part of the problems in this game. Everything else that you're going to see before and after this are still there. So, take it away past me. Let's get this crap done because I got a steak and potatoes waiting on me upstairs. Now, this segment is going to be a lot of the minor glitches that aren't as major as the ones before, but they still impact your gaming experience. For instance, the laser wisp in, certain, in some 2D sections is so dark that you can't even see what direction that the wisp pointer is facing. This particular glitch is kind of crazy because I guess Sonic really does become the Flash because a whole alternate timeline happens. It copies everything on the world twice. Like I said earlier, Sonic reflects way too much light in Starlight Carnival, and so much light to the point where he downright straight up just disappears in some parts of this world. Sorry guys, I just want to take the time and talk about how I really hope and pray that the next patch that they release is the one that fixes the crashes. Cause I'm, as I'm editing this, I'm looking through my comments and I'm seeing people who are commenting that they've lost their data more than 30 times. Like what? This is ridiculous. This game had, at the time I'm be recording this, it's the 16th, the day that you're seeing this video. and. Sonic Colors isn't even oh, two weeks old yet, and people had to restart this game more than two times. Like what? You already know what happened to me, but man, this is, this is horrible. Some sections of Accordion Park where you're inside of the clear tubes look very muddy and murky compared to the original game. And as you can see in this particular section on the top left corner, that the fishes are popping in and out of existence. So yeah, that's cool. Also, in every single water running section in this world, your boost trail disappears. However, the effects still linger on your feet. And with the fire boost, it kind of looks like that Sonic has uh, Sanji's Diablo Jumbo. So this is actually a, a bug that I like. Asteroid Coaster is actually the most polished world in the game. All the glitches that I could find were just from the first act. Like right here, before the act even begins, we can see Sonic jumping to the roller coaster. Then coming up, there's going to be a whisk capsule that we can't grab. And then the one after that is just a really sharp camera angle that kind of disorients you from the path that you're traveling to. I don't want this video to be too long, so we're gonna call it quits here. Well, actually, there is one more thing left, and, <laughs> well, actions speak louder than words.